All right, in this video, we're gonna synthesize pretty much the entire semester of synoptic meteorology into a couple of points to demonstrate how everything that we've talked about is all connected together. And so where do we begin? First and foremost, we have to think about what we've got that we can't change. And that is the fact that number one, we have a differentially heated rotating planet. It's what we've got. We can't change that. We rotate once upon the axis every single day. The sun shines down, and depending on the orientation of the Earth to the sun, we'll differentially heat the Earth's surface in different way. What results from number one is that we have a global circulation. Our global circulation drives the fact that we get in our mid-latitudes in Rossby waves. Our upper level Rossby waves, we know, occur from this global circulation because they are hydrodynamically unstable given the baroclinic setup of our differentially heated rotating planet. With our Rossby waves, that generally wavy pattern will yield changes to the atmosphere owing to thermal wind balance. The fact that we initially have a differentially heated rotating planet giving us upper level Rossby waves means that we are getting thrown out of thermal wind, wind balance through this differentially heated planet. And these Rossby waves are an attempt to bring us back towards thermal wind balance. But what happens is we get locally increased temperature gradients. which then lead to falling local pressure. Once we get these locally increased temperature gradients and the locally falling pressure, we now induce a geostrophic motions which are primarily bent up in our secondary ageostrophic circulations. These ageostrophic circulations promote fronts and jet streams that indicate areas of rising and sinking motion associated with our main low pressure centers. These area of pressure falls also indicate regions in which we get air moving together or convergence. And if we know that we get convergence of air near the surface due to some mid-level rising motion, that will lead to spin up of cyclonic relative geostrophic vorticity. So if we don't have any spin initially, we can generate some spin, which if we have our cyclonic geostrophic relative vorticity, we will then get height falls, we get height falls, we get pressure falls, and the generation of low pressure systems, or at least low pressure at the surface. This would though quickly fill itself if we do not have strong upper level forcings associated with it. And so what happens with this spin up of cyclonic geostrophic relative vorticity is we locally 
further enhance our temperature gradient. which we know uh, will then create stronger jets and fronts, such that we then continue to strengthen our rising motion and our ageostrophic circulations, and this process feeds on itself. If the atmosphere is aligned in such a way to continue this process, uh, we get what we call self-development. We could also get couple jets to produce an even stronger response, which then uh, may generate uh, upper level positive PV anomalies, uh, but generally also build APE. When we create locally enhanced temperature gradients, we are building the available potential energy available to the atmosphere to be used. And as we build it up, build that, build it up, create stronger and stronger temperature gradients, we're going to get, create stronger and stronger ageostrophic circulations to then get us back into thermal wind balance. Because that is the ultimate goal of the atmosphere, to get to balance. Luckily, we never quite get there, and that we go through this continuous cycling of building up energy and using energy in terms of our kinetic energy to realize things like wind speeds and secondary circulations. And so all of this is also associated with then our upper level positive PV anomalies. Uh, which are associated with our cyclones and maybe even with some tropopause folding with upper level fronts. A tropopause fold is where literally we can bring down through our various circulations large segments of the stratosphere and have it come under portions of the troposphere so that then you end up with something here. This would be our trope fold right in here. This would be our stratospheric air. And then our tropospheric air would be here. Such that here we can go from stratosphere to troposphere to stratosphere again. And this idea of a trope fold uh, is sometimes associated with our strongest cyclones. And this fold here is a very strong positive PV anomaly, as it is associated with our high static stability, high vorticity air uh, associated along our, our tropopause. And if everything is properly aligned between our surface and our upper levels, we can get the appropriate phase locking of our entire system. And so in order to, for a forecaster to diagnose well all the elements of the atmosphere, all of these things must be considered. And that everything in our atmosphere goes back to this idea of our differentially heat, heated rotating planet. And so to some extent, yes, it does, in fact, all go back to the sun. Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. And all of this is connected and ongoing at any given time uh, throughout our entire atmosphere as we have cyclones and fronts and jets in various stages of responding to or getting us back into thermal wind balance within the atmosphere. That's one of the reasons why synoptic meteorology is so fascinating and also so difficult to predict because there are so many elements that are all interacting simultaneously. And that's why forecasting is hard. And never be discouraged by a bad forecast, as that is just but a means to learn something. That's it for Synoptic Meteorology. Thanks for watching.